Hey guys, Tracy here, Kansas Garden Guy Summer Pick Farms. How are you guys doing today? Well, it's Friday. That means it's video day for me. Um, we are currently like getting blasted by hot weather. We are on our third 100 degree actual temperature day. I think yesterday was like a buck 05 and today's supposed to be like a 106 or 107 with the heat index. We've got like a 20 mile an hour south wind, so that's pushing all that hot air up. But I don't think we're going to get any rain till Monday. So we were on, I think, a week and a half now of no rain. So I've been watering two or three times a day on top of the lettuce and stuff like that, just trying to get that stuff to cool down. Right, so let's walk outside. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, like I said, it's a little windy outside, but we'll fight through it here. As you can see, it's pretty bright. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. So... <clears throat> I just poured some coffee and it's hot and I didn't want to drag it outside. So I figured I'd walk you guys outside here and show you guys what's going on. As you can see, it's beautiful though. I love my Kansas bluebird skies. Don't like the heat, but I like the bluebird skies. Let me get you turned around. All right. <clears throat> As you can see, stuff looks a little different around here. Table's gone with all the starts. All we've got is what's left here. We've got some bachelor buttons, oregano, sage. Some basil that we don't have any room for, oregano, and I've got some of my hot peppers here that were going to go in last night, but I'll explain to you what I did. We still got some buckets with some taters in it. Um, as you can see, they're still going strong. The, uh, what are they? I think they were the red Lasotas. We dumped those the other night in those big buckets, and we did pretty decent on them. Still waiting on these, though. Check out this tunnel. <clears throat> it's crazy crazy like all this stupid grass in the middle of my aisle it's literally with these 100 degree temperatures it's been 120 degrees maxing out my thermometer in here um i cannot physically even be in here it's so hot i have the sides open and everything it's got good airflow as you can see i mean everything's moving even my shovels on the wall are moving so we've got good airflow through here it's just i have not been in here to cut this grass but uh let's see what it is today in here Okay, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's an already almost 90 degrees in here. So, but as you can see, I've got stuff pulled out. I've got this, I got my fan off so we can talk in here. I have got my Carolina Reapers and my Ghost Peppers and my Komodo Dragons in the tunnel now here. Pulled all of the bok choy out and the kale because it was getting ate up by some bugs. So we pulled all those out. And I'm, go I'm feeding them right now. As you can see, the wet spots, I've got my drip running on my field tomatoes and in the tunnel. <clears throat> so, as you can see, everything's looking good. Um, you know, they're, they're a little behind because I'm just now getting them in the ground. So, we're probably a month behind. So, hopefully, that doesn't hinder us too much when it comes to market. But we'll see. If not, I mean, you know, it'll get here when it gets here. Um, lettuce is looking great. This stuff here is that Cherokee that we talked about from Haas. And it looks amazing. I, I love my Tejama lettuce, which we're always going to grow that as a staple, which you guys can see that right there interplanted. But I think I'm going to grow this Cherokee also. And I've loved it. We've made a couple salads out of it. Man, it's so pretty. It's so beautiful. And we've got one more. We've got that Skyphos out in the field, and we'll look at that here in a bit. But see, I got to get through here. Me and my wife were walking through here last night. We were like, I got to get in here and get these weeds out. It's just been so hot. It's, it's miserable to be inside of here. And of course, the grass just takes off when you're feeding it with fertilizer and water every day. Um, but I'm trying to keep out of the shadows here. We've picked two or three tomatoes already that ripened up on the vine. These are all, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid these are all going to come on at the same time almost. So it's going to be just, just, just crazy for about two weeks. But everything is doing amazing in here still. Um, like I said, I, I feed it I feed it once a day or every other day for three hours on drip. And I think that's the key. With tomatoes, you want to be consistent in your watering. You know, tomatoes need a gallon or an inch of water per week per plant. So that's a lot of water. Um, so what I have found out is I run my water, my drip, anywhere from two and a half hours to three and a half hours depending on what I'm doing if I'm feeding I run it at three to three hours and if I'm not feeding like today I skip it so I feed uh once a week and then the next 
uh, during the week, two or three days later, I just water and then I go back to feed water, feed water. Since I'm using the Agri Thrive, it's not a harsh um, synthetic fertilizer. It's actually this organic fish emulsion, so it does not hurt the plants. So, but <clears throat> these guys are looking good. I got to get in here and mow, it looks like almost. Holy cow. And the bad thing is, is these are on wood chips. There's wood chips under. There's not even dirt there. <clears throat> There's wood chips and cardboard. But uh, these are looking really good. I mean, they're amazing. I'm so ecstatic with this high tunnel this year. This is exactly why I wanted one. Um, if you guys are new to this channel, check back some of my other videos. Um, I just put this high tunnel in last fall for the first time, <clears throat> and I've never grown anything in here until October of last year. So everything we've done has been what I've seen on other YouTube videos or uh, what people have commented on my Instagram and stuff about stuff, or I've just asked people questions. I mean, that's the best way to do it. Just ask questions. And people, most of the time, people are nice enough to give you answers to your questions. Some don't. I've ran into a couple people that that do not respond back or do not want to give you the answers. Like, the person with the answers is the winner or something. I don't understand that. We're all in here for gardening. We're all in here to share knowledge. So, <clears throat> But look at this. Man, these things are looking so good. <clears throat> so good. You but can see I've got I went ahead and pulled the strings up on these and we went ahead and clipped them up and then you can see the ones we have not clipped up yet. I need her help. These things are so heavy now. I can't hold the plant up and tie at the same time. So <clears throat> I actually need help to get this done now. But man, these things are killing it. These BHN 589s. I am so astounded. Man. I'm telling you, that electric toothbrush idea works very well. If you guys watch my other videos, you guys know I hand pollinate these with my electric toothbrush just to try to get me as the best germination as possibly can. Look down that aisle. There's tomatoes for days down there. All right, let's keep walking. See, we're clearing out. Only got some cucumelon starts left and some tomatoes and cherry tomato starts. Some tomatillos I got to get in the ground still. Um, these were my extras left over, so I'm just kind of sitting on them, giving them away to people that could possibly use some tomato starts. I hate to throw them away, but I think that's what I'm going to have to end up doing. Uh, but, you know, that's the way, that's how you do it. Oh, look at this. This is way different now. So the table's gone with everything, so I'm not stressed out about having all my starts sitting here. Um, we've, I've started working on these beds. So now I've got my peppers out here. So that far row is jalapenos. The second one is um, hab orange habaneros. And then the third row is my red savina and my uh, West Indies habaneros. And then I've got two more rows here. I ran out of compost. That's why I've got an empty row. Got to go get some compost. Um, I need to put my ring of fires and I need to put my serranos in here. And then I can build two more rows for extra stuff. But look at this. It's amazing. Stuff's getting done. <laughs> you can see how wet the soil is here. And I got standing water here. Well, you know that I put my above ground sprinklers in. Yesterday, <clears throat> I came out here and I worked from about 8 till 10. And what I did was I went ahead and built, sorry, I built, I built these last two beds yesterday. And I built those, for, those three two days ago. And me and my wife came in the next night. And we planted it out and watered them. So yesterday, I went to feed these with Agri Thrive and water while I was building these two beds. And then I had this great idea that, hey, I was going to turn the overhead sprinkler on and let it run, you know, for that 15, 20 minutes to get a really good soak on this lettuce. This is that Skyfos. Hopefully you guys can hear me. This wind is crazy. Um, we Agri Thrived it yesterday and put a little bit of water on it. Um, as you can see, that's some more of that uh, red Cherokee that's inside the tunnels out here. Hopefully these guys take off. They, they're looking a little rough starting, but uh, they, they, I think they'll take off. But anyway, <clears throat> so I turned this water on, and I worked out here on these beds for about an hour. I forgot to shut the water off. That was 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. So it got really hot. I went inside, and I ate some lunch, and about noon or 1 o'clock, I jumped on the motorcycle, and I went for a ride for three or four hours. And then I got home, and then I made dinner, and then me and my wife came out here to water the plants, and guess what was still on? 
the sprinkler system. I left the sprinkler on for 10 hours yesterday. Oh my God. I usually put timers on these, but I didn't put a timer on it because I knew I was working in this bed over here. So I knew, okay, well, I'll shut it off. I completely forgot. 10 hours I left this sprinkler on. Hopefully it doesn't smash out my, my onions here by giving them too much water. And I couldn't even imagine what my water bill is going to be now with 10 hours of these sprinklers running. But <clears throat> you live and you learn. Look how wet this soil is now. I mean, it, it's wet. So I can't get in here today and do what I need to do. But I wanted to show you guys the progress we've got. Like I said, we, it's kind of wet here. so. <laughs> but the lettuce is still looking great. They say this red Cherokee, this Skyphos, and the Tehama are very heat tolerant lettuces and they grow well in the south because of the tolerant. That's why I purchased them because I knew with our Kansas high humidity and low humidity high temperatures that I needed a lettuce that would not quick bolt. And this is it, this Tehama, you guys can see that stuff, is awesome to grow here in Kansas. It grows well, transplants well, seed starts well, I have nothing bad to say about this lettuce at all. Besides, I wish I could grow another 500 heads of it. <clears throat> As you can see, this is the other Tehama in the field. It looks amazing. Zero bug pressure, as you can see in there. Everything looks great. Knock on wood, zero bug pressure. But it's looking amazing. So I'm gonna get ready to harvest this in about another week. They probably are about three quarters of full size. Um, onions are still looking good. We got some plants in, so <clears throat> we've got some uh, some zinnias. I love zinnias, so we planted um, a couple hundred zinnias. They're getting ready to, as you can see, they're getting ready to pop up. They've been in seed starting trays, so it's been taking a while for me to get this stuff in here because it's been so hot or so wet. Not an excuse, just just me trying to get stuff done. And then we put a bunch of giant marigolds in there uh, for some flowers track some pollinators and maybe keep some bad bugs away maybe some deer stuff like that um, everything else is looking great the peppers are looking really good sorry about the shadow there uh, we agri thrived them yesterday with a little bit of feed they all have got peppers put on them most of them are starting to put like this cubanelle here most of them as you can see are starting to put a little bit on they, they look pretty bad though they're not bushing out yet um, hopefully these guys will make it because this is all the peppers I've got I think we've got, I don't know, 65 sweet pepper plants. And then of course, all that stuff in that bed's gonna be hot pepper plants. So we have a lot of south wind, as you can tell. So if people are worried about cross-pollination, which I'm really not, because last year I had habaneros intertwined with sweet peppers and I didn't have any sweet peppers that were hot. So I don't know about all that cross-pollination, but anyway, these are looking pretty decent. As you can see, I've got shishitos. So let's take a walk up to the big garden and we'll check it out. Okay, you can see everything looks way different. Um, it's amazing what a week does out here. But you know, we've got squash coming on. This one here is our, uh, you know, sidetrack picking weeds. This is a pretty decent looking squash here. That will be ready in the next couple days. We've picked two or three of these patty pan squash out. Looks like we'll have another one to pick right here. Um, we've got these total eclipse, partial eclipse, semi-eclipse, and uh, they seem to be fruiting out really nice, as you can see. You can see them all over there. So I'm pretty happy. Um, looks like this may be one we just, yep, just pull it off. Pull it off and throw it away. But, um, so that's how you do it with squash and zucchini, apparently on, you know, I mean... Stuff happens, you get vine bores or you get something like that and you know, you can't do anything with these. But uh, makes me sad, but you know what? It's the way squash and zucchini are. But everything else looks pretty good, pretty healthy. So we got eight more squash in. <clears throat> I ran out of T-post, so I'm gonna have to go back to tractor supply and get me some. But also the trellis netting that I bought was the wrong size, way too short. Uh, this is a 50 foot span and I don't know what I was thinking, but I bought 30 foot long netting. <laughs> so I don't want to chop and tie, chop and tie. So 
I just got back on Amazon and uh, we ordered um, 350 foot of Hortonola trellis. So I'll save that other stuff for something else. It's not going to go to waste. You could always use trellis netting. So it's not like anything's going to waste. Cucumbers are looking good. You guys can see from last time you guys saw them, they're already starting to climb up really good. So like I said, we fed everything yesterday, last night. But it ain't going to be no time at all. We're going to be getting cucumbers. Now, zucchini, we've been killing it with zucchini this week. We have literally pulled, I don't know, a dozen zucchini off. As you can see, there's one right there. We've pulled a dozen zucchini off already this week. From the striped ones, which we have a striped one right there. And also... I have killed seven adult squash bugs last night. So I went through and I found some of these striped ones, and I can't remember the name of these. I'm going to have to look these up. Uh, had the most eggs and the most squash bugs on it, but the regular green zucchini hadn't had anything on it yet. So I don't know if it's that's just something the bugs like or it just happens to be that's just where they went. But, um, yeah. Hey, these guys have been doing doing great so we're getting some of this off see there's another striped one there see there's a squash bug see him best thing you can do is just do that it's all you can do when they get started because the last thing you want are squash bugs so i know it's disgusting to smash them but that is your best um I know it's disgusting to smash them, but that is probably your best line right now is to do that. Um, I sprayed last night with some neem oil and some spinosad, which is fully organic. So, um, and I do that from time to time when I see the first presence of any type of squash bugs or uh, eggs. And then that usually will help me control it. It does not stop it. Nothing's going to stop a squash bug. Unfortunately, nothing's going to stop it when it gets to adult size. The only thing that stops them is you smashing them. Other than that, it just slows them down. But that neem oil and pyrethrin will stop the eggs and the, and the, uh, the baby ones. The, yeah, squash bugs suck. But if you want squash and zucchini, that's what you got to deal with. The green beans have been crazy amazing. We've already picked probably two pounds of green beans this week alone off these plants. As you can see, we've got tons of buds on it. There's, and look at that. We're going to have to pick. I told her we're probably going to have to pick again this week. But we did get a handful, but you see all the flowers. So, guys, I think this is where I'm going to end the video. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I say short and sweet. And it's about 20 minutes. Um... But guys, if you guys like the content here, make sure you give me the big thumbs up and uh, share these videos with your friends or family or whatever you want to do. Um, put comments down below. I love to hear you guys leave comments and I answer every comment. I promise. I promise you that. Anyway, guys, be safe. And please, if you're in an area where it's as hot as it is right now, work when you can. Take a lot of breaks. Drink a lot of water. Be safe, guys. There's no need for anybody to, to get sick or die over this heat. But anyway, guys. I will talk to you later on the next one. Bye.